Hello, hello. How is everyone doing? Okay, so my name is Matty Scott, if you don't know. Um, welcome to the final lesson of keyboards. Okay, before I start, I need to read out the disclaimer. So, if you're under the age of 18, tell your parents you're doing this session. Feel free to ask questions and make comments, but stay safe online by just using your first name. Don't give out any of your contact details and enjoy the session. Brilliant. So get yourself your keyboard in front of you. I've got a bit of a different setup to my keyboards here now. Um, get a water bottle because it's really hot. You might be wondering what this is. This is a um, makeshift sort of windbreaker because I've got my fan here and I don't want it blowing into the microphone. At the bottom, you'll see a keyboard and that's just to follow what I'm playing. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's get going. So last week, we said we knew the difference between tonality and modality. We knew about functional and non-functional harmony. We knew about tension and resolution within functional harmony. Uh, we knew about modes and we could play Dorian and Mixolydian modes. And then we learned a bit about modal jazz and played So What by Miles Davis. So, you've guessed it already. The screen has gone dark. That's so loud for me, I'm sorry. But it is in fact game time, game time, game time. So, question one. What kind of harmony is arranged around tension and resolution? Is it A, functional harmony, B, non-functional harmony, or C, bon-functional harmony? Time starts now. Is it A, B, or C? So we looked at two different kinds of harmony last time. One to do with tonality, one with modality. Which one has tension and resolution? The answer is, if it will change, mm -hmm. it's frozen, oh no, oh. oh there we go, never mind, it's the wrong answer anyway, let me change this, because <laughs> I did this last week, okay, the answer is A, functional harmony, it's very smooth, Yay. so if you got that right, congratulations, you get a point. I'm just going to make sure you can hear me. If you want to leave comments through this by any way, um, means please do, and I will get back to you when I can. So, question two. Tonality, as opposed to modality, it uses A, major and minor keys, B, modes, or C, both. Okay? So time starts now. So we're talking about this in comparison to modality. The answer is... Yay. Hey, so if you got that right, congratulations, you got a point. Brilliant. So, which mixolydian key uses all the white notes? Is it A, A mixolydian? Is it B, G mixolydian? Or is it C, F mixolydian? And it sounds like this. Okay, so which one is it? Time starts now. So it's using all the white notes in mixolydian. Is it A, G, or F? Okay, and the answer is B. Yay. So we've got that right. Congratulations, you get a point. Well done. Okay, so which notes in a major scale, a scale do you flatten to turn it into a Dorian, a Dorian mode? Is it A, the third and the seventh? Is it B, the fifth and the sixth? Or is it C, the second and the fourth? Okay, so time starts now, and it sounds like this. So which ones do you flatten to turn it from a major key into a Dorian mode? Okay, and the answer is Yay. A, it's the third and the seventh. So if you got that right, congratulations, you get a point. Okay, now can you play Miles Davis, So What, along with me? Okay, so we'll just play the head. Um, I'm just gonna make sure I've got, yeah I can. So I've got a little keyboard with in front of me now. Um, I'll move the camera around so you can see me a bit better. But if I'm out of shot, I'm very sorry. But we're just going to do the head for this. So. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, I've got enough room. Okay, so you ready? So one, a two, a one, two, three, four.
Brilliant. So that is Miles Davis, say what? Um, brilliant. If you're struggling with that at all, good job everyone. I'll move this over so it's back on me. Cool. So if you're struggling with that at all, there's the links to previous week's sessions. That was week nine. It was a hard one, so we looked at quite a lot of like modality and functional harmony. Um, so if you need to go over that again, feel free. But you won't really need it for this session, so don't worry too much. You can go back to it another time. So today is the last session, as I said. It's week 10, and we're looking at drums and MIDI. So it's a bit more fun this session. Not as much harm music, yeah, music theory. It's not more about playing and just having a bit of fun. So, drums on a keyboard, you say? The answer is yes. I don't know if you get that. <laughs> Please get that reference. It's from The Simpsons. If you don't, you, you should watch more Simpsons. It's very good. Only the first 10 series though. But anyway, so you can get a drum kit on your most keyboards. Um, if you look on this, this is going to be kind of what yours looks like, I imagine. Most of them are like Yamaha or Casio, and they've got this sort of menu on the side of it where it says here and if you look along it in voices look for one that says drum kits or percussion and then find it and then what you do is you type in the number here so you might have to select voice first and then type in the number but then essentially you have drums on your keyboard now so I'm just gonna get drums on my keyboard very quickly brilliant there we go so yeah you can play drums on your keyboard so you can play things like There you go, it's cool, it's good fun. So, first thing we're gonna do is learn a bit about the drum kit. So the drum kit is made up of lots of drums, hence why it's called a drum kit. But, um, do you know what they're called? We're gonna run through that now. So, this one here is a kick drum and it sounds like this. It's cool. So that's played, if you play a C, try and find the C on your keyboard where it plays that sound. So play it with me. It won't be this one, or this one, well it's nothing there, or even this one. But this one, it's going to sound like that. So when you're playing a drum kit and you've got a pedal in front of you, hitting that big drum, boom, 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 that's the kick drum you're playing. And that's why it's called a kick drum, because you're kicking the pedal. Next we're going to learn about the snare. So this is the snare. So if you've got a drum roll, you play it on a snare drum. Um, and that's there, you play that with a D on your keyboard. So it's the one next to C. So play that with me. We're cool. So that is the snare drum. Next we're going to look at the hi-hat, and that sounds like this. And that's a symbol you have here, and you might see there's a pedal near it as well. So when you're playing it, you can play it closed, and that's on F sharp. Or you can open it by playing A sharp. I've not written that down there, but you can do. So find your hi-hat. Okay, next we're gonna look at the crash. Okay, so that is just a big symbol. You usually play it on beat one, um, and it's just kind of and that's on a C sharp. Not the one near the kick drum, not that, it's up here. So try and find that sound. Okay, and now we're gonna look at the ride, which is a D sharp, so it's just one up on from the crash on the black notes, and that sounds like that. It's a bit washier and rings out. So not the crash where it's like, it's nice, it's got a sort of ringy soft sound to it. Okay. And then that's the ride cymbal. And now we're gonna look at the toms and they sound like this. Cool. And that is F to C on the white notes. So find them. Uh, 
and yeah that's used mainly for like drum solos drum fills things like that if you want to be phil collins from the dairy milk advert doing that there you go you got that there um they're called tom toms so they you might notice as well all the drums that you're playing are on the white notes so you've got kick snare toms and then all the cymbals you're playing are on the black notes so hi-hat crash and ride brilliant so remember what they're called you've got kick drum on c snare drum on d hi-hat on f sharp crash symbol on c sharp rise symbol on d sharp and then you got your toms between f and c there you go so we're going to put that in a keyboard perspective you might want to take a screenshot or remember this so kick here on c snare on d hi-hat on these three black notes from f sharp to a sharp the middle one is if you're just pressing the pedal you're not hitting it with a stick you're just going to press the pedal so it's going to close the hi-hat but you're not hitting it with the stick okay and then you've got your crash symbol on c sharp the ride symbol on d sharp and your toms are coming down here and um, you might want to play with the other ones so you've got things like that's sort of like a side stick sound you got a clap on your D sharp. Um, and then what have you got here? Oh, you've got even more toms, somebody. And that's kind of like hitting your crash, your ride cymbal hard. And you can keep going, you've got cowbells. But we're going to just mainly look at these. These are sort of the essential sounds in a drum kit. Okay? So it is, in fact. That's right. That's right. It's game time, everybody. We all know it. We all love it. So, question one, name this drum and play it as well. So look where the arrow's pointing. I've flipped around, so I'm sorry about that if that's confusing. But what is that one called? Okay. So time is up. It is the kick yeah. drum. You got that right? Congratulations, you get a point. And it sounds like this. Play it with me. Okay, can you play this? What is it? Name and play that. It's this drum here. Begins with an S. Can you remember what it is? Okay, so time is up. It is the snare drum. Yay. So if you got that right, congratulations, you get a point. And it sounds like this. So play it with me. brilliant so next question what symbol is this here the one that arrow is pointing to time starts now and can you play it as well play it on your keyboard so what symbol have we got there time is up and it is it's your crash okay. symbol so you got that right congratulations you get a point and that's what it sounds like play it with me I'm sure your parents will be going mad at these drum sounds sooner or later, but it's good fun. I'm sorry to all the parents. Okay, so where do you find the tom-toms on your keyboard? Time starts now. Tom-toms. So they're the ones filling the drum solos. The do -do 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 so time is up. And they are here. Some of them have that E note in, but not all of them. So it's really, it's F to C. Yay. So if you got that right, congratulations, you get a point. So play them with me. Brilliant. Okay, where do you find the ride symbol on your keyboard? Okay, time starts now. It's not like It's the washy sort of symbol. Can you remember where you find that? Okay, time is up and it is here. There it is. 
So it's on your D sharp. Yay. So if you got that right, congratulations, you get a point. Play it with me. Brilliant. Okay. So, good job everyone. Well done. So now we're going to look at building a beat. Okay, so I've got a little table here. If you look at the top, it says 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So it's similar to the rhythm lesson we did, um, but we're going to play this on the drums now. So, see at the bottom we've got kick and it's on beats 1 and beats 3. So it's going to be like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Play that with me. 2 and 3 and 4. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And count it to 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1. Okay? Now we're going to put a snare in. So how we're playing the kick on one, two, three, four. We're going to play the snare on one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we're going to put that together. So let's first just do the snare on its own. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And now both. Okay, so one, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. And you can kind of hear there's a beat building up now. And one, two, three, four. 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 I'm going to get my little keyboard, so I've got a little one here I can just put in front of me. There you go. Now what we're going to do is add a hi-hat. So keep the snare in your left hand, the kick and snare, the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we do that with your left hand and then your right hand, get on the F sharp, and you're going to do this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So it might be quite tricky putting it together, so we'll do it nice and slow. Just start with the hi-hat on its own for now, and it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Okay, three, four. And now we're gonna put them together. So in your left hand you got one, two, three, four, and in your right hand you got one, two three four and we're putting them together so we go one two three four and one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four might be hard for you to get at first but keep practicing i'll play for a while so you can get in the beat i'll slow it down but you can hear you've got a drum beat now. Brilliant. So what we're doing now is we're gonna put a crash on beat one. Okay? So we're gonna play what we we're doing before. Sorry. <laughs> And now we're going to put the crash in. And that's what it's going to sound like. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Sorry if I'm making mistakes. I'm playing on a tiny keyboard. <laughs> and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two three and four and one and two and three and four and one 
cool. Now what we're going to do, you might not see it, but down here on the kick, we're going to play a double kick drum. So on it, instead of it being one, two, three, four, it's going to be one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So let's just do that with a kick and snare first, just one hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and 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 four. And now we're going to put the symbols in, so we're going to do it together. So one, two, three, four, one, sorry, <laughs> press the wrong one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and 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 three, and four. Keep it going. So you've got a drum beat here. There you go. So there you go, there's a basic drum beat. Well, hey, so now we're going to look at drum fills. That's kind of what it sounds like. So what is a drum fill? A drum fill is essentially a decorative piece of drumming that breaks away from a beat. So say you've got a beat. Here's the fill. See that sort of decorative. That's the kind of drum fill. Wasn't a very good one, but hey. So when you use drum fills, they're kind of there to indicate when a new section of the song is coming up. Um, they can just add a bit of rhythmic texture if things kind of going on for a while, um, and you're having more of a textural piece of music where there's not much in the chain in the sense of like harmonic changes or melodic changes, and they could just add a bit of rhythmic texture in there. Um, there might be bits of silence in a song, and you can just play in there, do a bit of a solo and show off in there, and it can also just be there to build up the music. Okay, so let's do our beat again. So one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now what we're going to do is add a drum fill on the three between three and four, and that's going to sound like this. And I want you to kind of just make it up. So play with the toms, play with the cymbals. You can just do it on the snare, you can just go. Just make it up, have a little play around and have some fun. Okay, so we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna play the same beat, but on the first row, first time I'll do a drum fill, and on the second time you'll do a drum fill. Okay, so we'll do that together. One, two, three, Four and one and two and three, four and one and two and drum fill. One. Keep it going. So that's kind of drum fills. You might want to practice them a bit more, but it's just a bit of fun. It's a chance to use all your other cymbals as well. So now we're going to look at MIDI. So we've learned how to play piano. You can play a bit of drums as well. Um, and we're going to look at MIDI. So what MIDI is, it stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Very complicated or very confusing. Essentially, it's just a way for a keyboard and a computer to communicate with each other. So you can play a keyboard 
and then it will come through on your computer essentially and you can play write something in on a computer and it will play it on your keyboard so to do this you need two things you need a USB MIDI cable for a keyboard and a DAW you might have a key one that comes with it but in the back of your keyboard there will be a little plug for you to plug in the keyboard um, and then we're gonna have less sort of the lesson's gonna change a bit now so it's gonna be less sort of playing along and having the slideshows but I'm just gonna talk about this first and then I'll show you a bit of how you can work with a DAW so a DAW it stands for a digital audio workstation it's essentially computer software to make and record music with um, so I'm going to talk about some different ones you might if you wanted to go into this I'll talk about different ones there's Gar Garage Band and Logic Pro Garage Band's like the free version and Logic Pro is the sort of advanced version where you have to pay a bit of money um, but they're really good they're well designed professionally used but the only problem with them is they're only available on like Apple computers like Macs but if you've got one of them I'd recommend them they're, they're brilliant there's also Ableton Live and it's really good for building electronic music and performing live with software um, and there's someone doing sessions there's someone who's done 10 weeks of lessons on Ableton Live with the cloth cap so if you're wanting to get into this more just get Ableton Live and go off his sessions they're really good um, I've watched a couple yeah they're brilliant so Ableton Live is really good especially if you just want to make music in your room it's Pro Tools and Pro Tools is brilliant it's kind of one of the oldest ones that producers have used in recording studios for years and that's because it's kind of designed around recording and mixing more than writing music and using MIDI um, but that's one of them there's FL Studios FL Studios used to be called Fruity Loops um, but they got sued by Kellogg's for Fruit Loop cereal which I find quite funny so now they're called FL Studios but they used to be it used to be really rubbish I won't lie to you it used to just be arranging loops but then it got better and better and Louis sort of like grime for some reason grime and dubstep was kind of built on FL Studios in the early days um, and it's good it's really good now it's it's really simple really accessible anyone can really use it and there's also Cubase so there's a piece of software called Cubase and it's really good all-rounder if you want to record on it it's really good for that if you want to write stuff on it it's really good for that and you can get that on um, Windows so Microsoft computers and you can get it on Macs as well okay so today though I'm gonna use Logic Pro How have we got we've got 15 minutes so I'm just gonna talk through Logic Pro with you for a bit so to do this what you need to do is get your USB cable here plug it in the back of your keyboard and plug it into your computer and then I'd also recommend getting some speakers or some headphones so I've got my, mine here and I'd put them on but um, I don't need them for now because I've got my speakers here and you can still hear what I'm doing so yeah I'm gonna go into that so I'm gonna change my sort of screen hey hey you see the behind the scenes okay so this is Logic Pro I'll get rid of this this is me playing drums and keyboards um, don't save that and it's gonna be like this if I start a new one up it comes up with this screen here um, and there's different options you can choose there's software instrument audio drummer external MIDI guitar and bass um, I'm gonna choose software instrument for now so this is how we're gonna use MIDI to control instruments within Logic so I click create and then this comes up on the side it says library so down here we've got lots of different instruments there's basses drum kits electronic drum kits guitars mallets orchestral instruments percussion piano synthesizers organs everything you want so I'm gonna choose a drum kit for now and I was using this one the Neo Soul one now I put that in and now if I play my keyboard you can see the sounds coming through and that's not coming from my keyboard it's coming from the computer okay so I'm gonna change the tempo up here this is the speed of the song I'm gonna make it a bit slower so you can follow it a bit more and change that to hundred beats per minute what that means is where you go one two three four in a minute you can get a hundred of those in okay and then you'll hear it count me in and then I'm gonna play a drum beat so I'm gonna turn it up a bit so I got the click properly There you go. So I've made a drum beat there. And I can listen back to it. 
and I'm not playing anything right now. My hands are free. It's just playing it back. So it's recorded it in for you. Brill. Okay. So what I'm going to do, just to make it a bit easier, I'm going to select all these. So I double click this. And then at the bottom this will show up. And I'm going to drag over everything. Whoa. So you can't see it, but there you go. They're all selected. They've all changed color. And then what I'm going to do is just press Q. I don't usually do this, but what it does is just put everything in time properly. There you go. I'm going to change that. I'm going to keep the beat going a bit. So this is my drum beat. And then at the top here, you can see it's kind of counting. So there's a one, two, three, four. And these are the bars. So you've got the one here, and then you've got some little lines here. So it's going one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, beat three, two, three, four, bar four, two, three, four, bar five, two, three, four. So that's essentially time as it's passing, but um, in beats. And if I click this and press U, it's going to make a loop around the drum beat. So if I play it now, it's looping the drum beat. Okay? So what I can do with that now is I can build it up. So I'm going to add another software instrument. So what I did there is I press this little plus button up here. You click that and it makes a new track. Then you do the same again, make sure it's on software instrument, then click create. Now I'm going to add some bass. So if you go along the library bit again, where it says all the different kinds of instruments, you want to select bass. And there's lots of different ones. I've not got them all downloaded because I, I don't use these that much, if I'm honest. But um, there's different ones. I'm going to use the finger style bass right now. And that sounds like this. There you go. Um, and I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to play a bass line. Actually, no, I'm going to put some piano in there. So I'll leave that there for now. And then I'm going to press the plus again, software instrument. And I'm going to go on the vintage electric piano. Very fancy. And then I'm going to choose one. So I'll choose um, a classic electric piano. Now that comes up and it sounds like this. And I've played a similar sort of thing to that. So when we did Autumn Leaves, I was playing on electric piano. Um, and what they are, they were pianos kind of made around the 70s, early 70s, I think, where it was kind of it was kind of mixed between electric guitar and a, p a natural acoustic piano. So you're hitting things, um, and it was sending a sort of signal instead of making an acoustic sound. So on a real piano. When you press a note, there's a hammer and it hits a string and it makes it go boom. But on an electric piano, there's a sort of a hammer and then it will hit a thing called a tine usually. And it's kind of just like a metal strip that's in tune and then it hits that and then it's get, that signal will get amplified and it makes this sound. Okay. So I'm going to put in some chords now. I'll play C, F, G and F. Keep it simple for you. I'm going to play it like this. One, two, three, four. There you go. And I'm going to do the same thing again where I get them all and make it in time. So I select it all and then I press Q. And now it sounds like this. It's on the loop. There you go. So this is kind of how people make music on computers essentially. This is the first sort of step. After this you can, it goes so further, there's so many things that you can do on this thing. But I'm just going to teach you the basics for now. And then what we've got, we've got this here. We've got our bass track again. So what we played was C, F, G and F. So I'm just going to play those notes in the same rhythm. 
So it's going to sound like this. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same again, make it all in time. got a song you're starting to build up a song like this so this is kind of using everything we've learned to build up a song so what I'm going to do now is I'll add a melody so I'll go into software instrument make a new one create it then I'll choose a synthesizer um, I'll use a synth I'll use a bell sound I like bell sounds so I'm just going to choose a random one Okay, and I'm going to just go through them until I find a nice one. So I use the arrow keys on my keyboard, computer keyboard, to kind of find them. And you see they all sound really cool. So you've got loads of sounds you can just play with, even if you don't want to build up your music. You can do it like this as well. Okay, that'll do for now. So I'll just make a little melody with that as well. There you go, and now we've got a, pretty much a basic song. So we've got your keyboards, you've got your bass guitar, you've got a melody, and you've got a drum kit. So if you want to make that into a different bit, what I'm going to do is play it again. So I'm going to select it all, and then I press Alt on my computer keyboard, and then I drag it along so it's here. So now we've got it on twice. But what I am going to do is add a drum fill. So to do that, I'm going to drag this over and take away the last two bars. So how I did that, it was here. You just select your mouse and the end of the section until you've got this little signal, this symbol. I'll make it a bit bigger. So along here, I click it and then I'll drag it along here. And now I'm going to make a drum, put in a drum fill. Okay. So I'll click it on record, and then I'll press record up here. Sorry, I had my keyboard on a different octave. <laughs> there we go. Okay, take two. There you go. And now let's put it in. So this is now section A. What I'm going to do now is record another drum beat. So we're going to make two sections. Okay. So from here I'll just make another drum beat. There you go. So that's my second drum beat. I, I'm quite good at playing keyboard drums, I won't lie, um, so don't worry if yours doesn't sound like mine. If it does, well done as well, I'm not trying to show off. <laughs> but yeah, so I've got that now, and then I'm going to make a new new lot of chords, so I'll go back on the piano. Now I'm just going to go C, C, G, A minor, G, F. Shall I do that? C, 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 C. G, G, F, F, I like that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So it's C, 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 G, G, F, 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 A minor, A minor, C, C. Okay. Okay, 
So I'm keeping this really simple. Make sure they're all in time again. And then I'm gonna say same on the bass. But on this I'm gonna play some octaves, so I'll go. So, so I get back to here, so I select, sl move this slider thing here, so I drag it until it's on number 9 again, and then I play it. One. Okay, I'm going to play that again because it wasn't very good. So, same again, drag it along here, click on the track you want and then press record. There you go, now I've got another bass line. And then let's do this same melody, another melody. Okay. And I'm just going to play a new melody now. Okay. And now, if I loop this bit, do the same again, just get it all in time. So I'm doing a shortcut where if I click here, and then press Command and A, it will select them all. And then I can press Q. So if you're wondering how I'm doing that fast, that's how. And don't worry about learning all this at the minute. I'm just kind of showing you how what you can do with a keyboard. So now if I play that, I'm just going to separate these two bits. And then if I repeat them, and now I'm going to loop all of it. So what I do is select everything, press U, and I'll play it. <laughs> And you've got a song essentially. So now we've got a song. Um, and that's pretty much what you can do with a keyboard by plugging it into a computer. There's loads of lessons on YouTube. If you want to use different software, check out the Ableton one. Um, I might do one on Logic in the future, I don't know yet. But that's how you can make a song. It's really simple. Once you get your head around it, I'm imagining most people who are watching this are quite young and really good with computers. You can get apps on your iPads or laptops, you can just get on your phone and there's loads of ways you can kind of make music like this. So yeah, check it out, I think it's really good. There you go. There we go. So that's how you can kind of make a song with on a computer. So you can plug your keyboard in and everything you've learned from these 10 weeks you can start building your own music and I think that's such an amazing thing and it's so accessible for everyone to really do if you've got a computer and you can get even if you don't have a keyboard with a USB thing in you can get something like this what I was using I think I got this off eBay for like 20 pounds um, and there you go you can go and I can play keyboards on that there you go and that's called a MIDI controller um, that one is particularly is a Korg Nano key. I like having a little one around, it's just handy when I'm doing recordings. So, if I go back here. So, yeah. I'm just going to say before we go, keep practicing and keep learning. You've learned so many things on the keyboards if you've stuck with all these. You've gone from such a beginner level to really quite an advanced level, especially last week when we are looking at like modal jazz. I wasn't expecting to go that far, but if you could keep up with that, well done. It's really good. Um, so keep practicing and keep learning. 
and then feel free to send us videos of you playing you can send us a message with videos but if you are going to do that and you're under 18 make sure you ask your parents permission first and then check that your privacy settings are set up properly so you can have it on just private so or unlisted and that way it's only people you send the link to um, can see it make sure you don't have it on public if you don't want everyone to see you play if you do go for it as well but make sure you ask your parents first so thank you very much for tuning in for these 10 weeks you've all been brilliant you have you've been wonderful here's me as a sunflower um, i've really enjoyed doing these so thank you very much if you're tuning in and listening and learning as well i hope you've enjoyed them and i hope they've been useful for you so thank you very much and i won't see you next week but yeah have a good rest of lockdown i hope it's not too bad for everyone hope everyone's keeping a high spirit and keeping busy so thank you very much for coming along i appreciate it